Doctor, if you could highlight some of the big advances in anti-aging medicine since the formation of this, uh, of your group. Just oh. pick the top couple three that, that really kind of stand out. Well, you know, it, it's, it, I don't want to take credit for it, but I will if you let me. <laughs> Um, but you know it's it's really pretty amazing. Uh, you got to realize back in 1992 when AFRM was formed, uh, they were uh, raiding doctor's offices. The feds were raiding mm -hmm. doctor's offices at gunpoint for prescribing things like uh, vitamin A and vitamin C and vitamin E and other non-toxic therapies. There was very little in the way of of what we might consider non-toxic or um, integrative health care or alternative health care. There, there really was none. Mm -hmm. And anti-aging medicine, the A4N, for research come out and talk about these other non-drug therapies. Though, don't want to give the wrong impression. It's not that we're against drug therapy. We're all for anything that works. And there are things that work as well or better than, than prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. And so we're for everything that works, which can help to ameliorate the degenerative processes of aging. Some of the things that have come along that have proven themselves quite well is high-dose antioxidant therapies, okay, which is vitamin therapies, mm -hmm. um, hormone replacement therapies, bioidentical hormone replacement therapies. These are all outshoots or outgrowths of the anti-aging medicine movement. Stem cell therapies, sure. um, cloning technology is still working its way through the laboratories, but that's another technology that really did not exist before A4M came along. And I, again, I don't want to claim that we're the ones who made it happen. We have made it safe for it to happen, mm -hmm. I think is the best way to say it. Um, genetic engineering, again, genetic, uh, genetic therapies have come along and are proving to be very, very helpful, at least in the diagnostic arena, and to a limited extent in the therapeutic arena. We're going to see amazing things with genetic therapies. So all these are really exciting new innovations that have occurred since the creation, the creation mm -hmm. of anti-aging medicine and the A4M. So some 20 plus years later, as new therapies come about, do you still see, maybe not to the degree of raiding doctor's offices, but are, is there still some backlash regarding newer therapies? The sad reality is that the FDA and the regulatory agencies are not necessarily there to protect the people as they like to claim. The sad reality is, is that these regulatory agencies more often than not protect the establishment and the pharmaceutical industry and the people who have the patents on the drugs. And because of that, you often, it's very, it's rare, I think exceedingly rare, to see the regulatory agencies go against things that don't work. That, that, that don't work. I, I don't see it happening. I don't see the regulatory agencies concern themselves with things that are bogus. Now, sometimes they'll go after things that are dangerous, but there's not that much that's out there that's dangerous. The worst you can say about most therapies uh, in the medical arena, at least, is that you know they they they, they don't they, they're not very effective. I don't see the regulatory agencies going after the ineffective therapies. I see them going after the effective therapies that are taking money away from the established pharmaceutical industries. And that is a political issue, and that continues mm -hmm. today, just as it did in the past. Um, the FDA has recently decided to raid doctors' offices and manufacturers of HCG. Oh my God, HCG mm -hmm. has been on the market for 50 years, God knows how much, maybe longer than that, maybe 60 years, 70 years. Uh, and their claim that it's uh, ineffective, well, it's certainly not, not unsafe. It's been used for seven, 60 years at mm -hmm. least. But is it effective or is it not effective? There's a heck of a lot of people who seem to have lost weight with the benefit of this. So even if it's just a very good placebo, what the heck's wrong with that? It's cheap, mm -hmm. it's safe, and it seems to be working for some people. That's just, the, I think, the latest example of regulatory, um, of regulation gone wrong. 
I think the regulatory bodies need, should be there to do the job they say they're there to do, which is to protect the public against dangerous things. If something's not dangerous, they should keep their nose out of it, because then it's a marketplace that will solve the issues. And people should have the right to make their own choices, their own informed, intelligent choices.